Good morning, folks. The coronal mass ejection was late, but it is impacting here now in the early to midday hours universal time. We've got a touch of preconditioning to the late impact, and we'll break all that down starting at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun was mostly quiet. Did get some pops. A couple even looked like they could have made CMEs. Coronagraphs show just faint solar wind signatures only. So let's come to the solar wind in geospace and the geomagnetic conditions. Bottom right, all you see is one yellow bar, and that is due to a phi angle shift, the sector boundary, interaction with the heliospheric current sheet. It was a significant interaction that caused the geomagnetic unrest here before that spike on the far right of the solar wind charts. Kind of hard to see, but that there is the CME impact. It struck hours later than expected, and so take my previous reassurance to you that this was not going to be a grid killer, and now eliminate any remaining doubt you had as to that forecast. With the whack indeed striking this morning, I would still expect geomagnetic storms, enduring unrest at the very least, but still a shade below what would have been expected if it had struck yesterday. KP5 or 6, a G1 or G2 storm, is now the best forecast, rather than the G3, KP7 that had been expected before. It's worth noting that while the southern active region that produced the CME is fading and turning out of view, the northern group is intact and approaching center disk with a trailer coming in behind it just over the limb this morning. Let's start the articles with one on mortality factors in northern Portugal over a considerable amount of time. Solar modulation is seen once again as in previous studies, and as usual, while the peak events in sunspot maximum are very relevant, the longer term, higher cosmic ray bombardment of sunspot minimum provides the higher contribution to the negative health effects. They have confirmed the long-term cooling trend of the North Atlantic and added that it's not just a slowdown of the overturning circulation, but atmospheric forcing as well. Think about it, that's sort of a slap in the face of global warming stories, considering that it's the atmosphere that is the alleged source of the warming oceans, but let's play devil's advocate and let them have their cake here. It's also telling us where that Arctic heat is coming from internally. Put back that heat to the North Atlantic, you've accounted for the Arctic amplification. Back to the IMF though, the sector boundaries and the heliospheric current sheet. Excellent article in the Bulletin of the American Astronomical Society here. This IMF is one of the primary drivers of aurora on Mars. Good read there. And folks, the high detail and long-term study of the heliospheric current sheet is nailing down more of what we already know. There are about 46 crossings of the heliospheric current sheet every year. 46 magnetic reversals of the solar wind. Once a week would be 52 a year, and so that's the once every 7 to 10 days crossing I have mentioned before. It's the most regular and unchanging aspect of space weather impacts from the sun. But at the galactic scale, the galactic current sheet is not only observed, the modeling now works as we saw in the October 29th morning show, which was a bombshell if this channel's ever had one, and it's not only regular and repeating, but it's basically the only space weather impacts that stars can expect at that galactic scale. Other stars nova usually don't reach their neighbors. There aren't major flares or galactic shock waves flying around. It's just the repeating cyclical galactic magnetic reversal. So let's scale up the heliospheric current sheet in our heads and apply what we learn at the solar system level, macromagnetic holes, a phenomenon tied to crossing the sheet and which we can envision at both the Earth scale and the suns in the galaxy. There are vastly decreased magnetic field strengths within the current sheet crossings, but there is enhanced plasma density and turbulence, the V and the B of the particles. Folks, that's the exact description of why we've said the galactic current sheet can shudder the solar wind and trigger accumulation-driven deflagration micronova events, and they'll happen cyclically over and over again, based on the evidence we've got here at Earth, say about every 12,000 years. Learn about the cycle, the evidence, how we're due for the next one, and how everything we'd expect to see is unfolding right now leading up to the next one. We've got a major playlist that can help, and so can our book on the disaster cycle. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.